Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another exciting video on IT and Automation Academy's YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to learn about DCS, Distributed Control System. If you guys haven't watched our earlier video and you want to know the difference between PLC and DCS, there's a link on the screen. You have to just click on that and watch it. In this video, we are not going to talk about the difference between PLC and DCS. Rather, we will focus only on DCS distributed control system. When we talk about DCS, it's a computerized control system for the processes and plants that consist of large number of the control loops, especially analog one, in which you know your controllers are actually distributed. Like you got different areas, and each area have its own controller. So in short, if in the case we talk about the DCS, DCS is very much famous in the industries like petrochemical fertilizer, oil and gas industries, and all big plants like power plants, you, you will definitely see DCS there. First thing is definitely process. And you know that in a process industry, there are different parameters. You have to sense them and you need instrumentation for that. First and for most important thing, if you focus on my cursor here, you can see that that's a process. And in a process industry, you got few important parameters like temperature flow level speed you know density and these all sort of a things actually requires instrumentation to measure pressure level flow temperature all these sort of parameters you can see here we got a different instrumentations like transmitters we got in and we got some final control elements like you can see here control walls you can have a fans you can have a motors these all things actually lies on your field level and then after that on a dcs network you see here you got in three areas here and each area has its own unique controller rather relying on one controller you put in three different areas have its own dcs controller system one thing to clarify here in a dcs network in a, this dcs control cabinet you would have two controllers instead of one so one would be your main controller and one would be redundant controller for instance in this unit if dcs controller by any means stop working like your one controller stop working, you got a redundant controller to take care about the job. You got another unit and you got a you know, third unit and these each unit have its own similar kind of a system. So one thing to understand, like PLCs, you got in here, put modules, you got in power supply, similar way you got output modules, you got digital ins, digital out, analog ins, analog out. If signal is coming from the transmitters, it have to go to analog input module, which would be here, one card here. It start with the TBs, terminal blocks, and then from there on, you got that connection to analog input module. So similar way you got in some digital signals in the field. So if in the case you want to brought in into the DCS network, that would get into your digital input card. And then similar way you got digital output cards and you got some analog output cards. There on these all controllers are actually connected to single common network. You can see here, these all three controllers are actually, three areas are actually connected to each other through control network and these are all sharing the data to one network which is actually going to be connected to your control room environment. You got in some very important components in your control room. So first and foremost important thing is your engineering workstation. What is that actually? Engineering workstation is there to actually program these all controllers and also to program the graphics you can see here. And then you got an OPC server here. What is the purpose of OPC server? OPC server connects your DCS system to any third party device. That can be SCADA, that can be any other device that requires information, that requires the tags that are like temperatures, pressure level and flow. All the tags that are in DCS can be actually exchanged to any third party device by using that OPC server. What is the purpose of this historian? That's very important to understand. Historians are there actually to keep a record of historical data. What are the pressure, temperature, level, flow values in back in 10 years 
how you can see that you are definitely going to need a historian for that historians actually store historical data of all control parameters trend or some other graphics to be printed you require a printer for that then you got in operator screens here and operator screens are there to actually visualize for sure temperature what's the level what are the different process conditions that exist in in your plant and specific area you definitely require some visualization for that and for sure in odysseus you got in its own customized graphics operator screens where you can visualize all process what's going on what's the temperature what's the flow what's the level you definitely need to know that and for sure you can see all that in operator screen now in a next one we are definitely going to talk about what is the difference between dcs and scada and for sure then from there on we would have DCS commissioning step if in the case you are interested do let me know in the, if you like this video hit the like button and if in the case you haven't subscribed our YouTube channel consider subscribing till next video take care and Allah Hafiz